Hello and welcome to our an, to another video for revision for the ad, additional mathematics examination. So in this section we'll be doing coordinate geometry. And to start off with, we need to understand how coordinates work. Now obviously we have a, a basic understanding about our x-axis and our y-axis and then points will have coordinates in our graph. So for example, here it's going to have an x-coordinate of this much and here it's going to have a y coordinate of this much. So in the exam you need to know about the gradient of a line. So for example, if I were to give you your two axes and then I were to put a point on it and then another point and you need to work out that gradient of that line. Well, how would you do it? Well, logically, you have this line here, and you also have the coordinates of the two points. So you can use the corresponding x coordinates of the two lines to work out the x distance, and the y coordinates of the two lines to work out the corresponding y distance, and then as a result, you can work out the height. You can um, basically work out the gradient by doing change in y divided by change in x and that will give you the gradient. Likewise, you can also use the Pythagorean theorem and then square the y difference and then square the x distance then add them together and then root your answer to get the length of a line. You might also need to find out the midpoint, work out the, um, the mean or the median, because there's only two points, of the x the x uh, values, and then the the average of the y values, and that will give you your midpoint. Uh, you could you should also know how to draw a line with this equation. Just make sure that the y hits the y-intercept, or if it's going to be x, um, you know x plus three x plus four y, just you know cover it up. So when x is equal to zero, then that means three y is going to be equal to some other number. You can use that to work out uh, whatever you need. You also need to know about the intersection of two lines, um, but that's pretty straightforward because that's simultaneous equations. And then you must go on eventually to the circle. And the circle is quite a complex concept. Um, it's not that hard though, because if you would have, you could imagine, how would you draw a circle on a graph? Because most of the time it was lines. Every now and then we'll come across the occasional curve. But then how do you get such an elliptical curve, a perfect circle? Well, how do you define a circle? All the points that are equidistant from another point, known as the center. In this case, let's make it the origin of the graph. Then how do we make sure all these points are the same distance? Well, the distance of a point from the origin is going to be the square of its x-coordinate, uh, plus the square the plus the square of its y coordinate or rooted and that will give you the distance away from the origin and suppose we want uh, a constant uh, distance well that's going to be equal to the radius so then we get the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared for a circle around the origin but if we want to, let's say, uh, translate this circle, so if the circle were to be on some other part of the graph, for example, um, we wanted a circle to be up there, well, we could, th this uh, new circle will have a center. And that, it will have an x-coordinate, which we can call a, and a y-coordinate, which we can call b. And then, due to... Uh, function translations, we'll find that x minus a can be substituted for, for the original x minus 0, and then uh, we can also have a y minus b substituted for y minus 0 is equal to r squared, and that will give you your gener generic formula of the circle, and then where r is your radius, and A is the x-coordinate of the center, and B is the y-coordinate of the center. And obviously, if you need to find an intersection, just do the simultaneous equations, as you would normally do. 
and then you have the applications of coordinate geometry. So it's mainly just um, not a lot about inequalities. You need to know. So just draw them like graphs. If it's uh, greater than or less than without the equals, just make it dotted like usual. Shade the. I think normally we have to shade the unwanted region, although other people beg to differ in different boards, but don't worry about that. And um, you might come across the need to do objective functions and stuff like that. And basically, that comes in linear programming. Um, it might ask you to find the highest amount you can get. And it might say that you have, for example, you're, you're, you're selling tickets for a concert. And the how much, what's the greatest profit you can make when you have... Uh, two pounds, you have a two pound ticket and you have a three pound ticket uh, and the number of two pound tickets you sell is X, the number of three pound tickets is Y and there's a maximum of 450 uh, tickets can be sold because that's the capacity of the venue. Yes, so now to draw, what we need to do here is we need to draw the graph. So to start off with, we'll have um, uh, two axes. Obviously, you can't have a negative number of uh, tickets sold for either prices. And we have a rule that we can't go over 450. So that's going to be x. The total number of tickets x plus y is equal. is, is got to be less than or equal to 450. And then we can draw a horizontal line or a. a a diagonal line of gr gradient minus one intersecting at 450 on both axes and then we have a region that we can work with um, now obviously our we might the obviously it'll make sense to go for the highest number of three but if we were to change the rule for example if we, there were some more attributes that created another line here that might come across, maybe even even in certain circumstances, a line that might go like this. So then you have a bit here. What you'll find in this circumstance is that you might try and hit this point if you can, depending on the objective function which we'll create. So obviously the amount, the total profit you're going to make is, or the total revenue, which might be what you want, is going to be two x plus three y, and then the it's going to be equal to a number. So you'll call it revenue here, and then the revenue will be different values so you might this function it's it's obvious it's going to have a, a negative gradient but it might look some it, the what if r is a low number it might look something like this if it's higher it might look something like this but ultimately what we really want is for it to intersect at the highest possible point so we ultimately this will be the objective function we will stick with in the value of, and then what we can do at that point is to take the x value and that'll tell us how many of x we want take the y value that's how many uh, y ticks we must sell and in, eventually you'll find it will give us the highest profit but you must make sure that this is an integer because if it's not an integer you must round it down and, and do all sorts just to make sure that you're not selling half a ticket or anything like that. So guys, that is all you must know for the coordinate geometry section of your exam. It's it's quite a, the, one of the interesting sections because in mathematics, coordinate geometry is used a lot. It, it, it's sort of the point where at which we learn a bit about geometry, but on a graph. And as a result, it can be much more mathematical because you can do a lot more equations, work out tangents and all sorts, especially when you bring in calculus. But yeah, a lot of things do happen on uh, coordinates. As later on, you might find stuff like longitude and stuff like that, where you're not working on um, your usual uh, coordinate systems. Because at the moment, um, we are using Euclidean space a two-dimensional plane so eventually you'll find that there are other applications and stuff but anyway I hope I wish you all luck for your exam tomorrow hope it goes good I hope you do well